Welcome everyone to the latest episode of the Sight Screen Cricket Journal podcast. I'm your host, Tohid Qureshi, and today we're going to be previewing a crunch clash, uh, which is tomorrow's crunch clash between Bangladesh and India. It's in uh, the Super 12 phase, obviously, of the uh, the ongoing ICC Men's T20 World Cup. And it really is a crunch game because both teams are uh, placed on four points in the group t- uh, two uh, table. And obviously, they've only got two games remaining. So both teams, so for both teams, it's, it's kind of a, a virtual uh, knockout kind of scenario. Uh, so to talk about tomorrow's game and also kind of looking in a bit more detail uh on india's progress on the in the tournament so far i've got a guest who is editor of wisdom india it's adya sharma welcome adya yeah thanks for having me great great to have you on today so as i was saying there it's it's clearly a crunch game uh, for both teams, uh, I feel whoever loses tomorrow really can kind of wave goodbye their their chances of qualification through to the semis. I mean, is that how you kind of perceive tomorrow's game as well? Yeah, it's it's going to be a pretty interesting game. Um, I was actually surprised by Shakib's comment saying that you know India are favourites uh, to win the game, and, and um, you know, <clears throat> uh, Bangladesh here to challenge them but uh, i think it's going to be much more closer than that especially given that uh, you know uh, india is coming back coming on the back of a, of a defeat to south africa so it's not as if you know uh, it's right after the win against pakistan there's, there's there's a gap in the middle so that momentum in a way has been lost and bangladesh obviously um, with the win against zimbabwe uh, victories like these can sometimes turn a campaign and although the net run rate is still uh, lagging for them i think um, it's going to be a very very interesting game yeah i think i think you're absolutely right there i mean it's interesting also about what you say about uh, Shakib's comments. I did, I did sort of have a look at that uh, press conference as well, and yeah, he was very much kind of downplaying the team's chances, um, and it's an interesting one because in one on one hand, I can see what he's saying. India are clearly favourites to win not only this game. I would say you know one of the favourites to win the whole competition. So I can see what he's trying to say from from that point of view maybe as well he's trying to i don't know kind of ease the expectation of an upset from from a bangladesh point of view but yeah sometimes you know not appearing to be as confident as 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 you might be doesn't always play very well with the fans i've i've seen some kind of reaction on social media earlier on today sort of saying that you know his comment you know he should be a bit more confident he should kind of go into it uh thinking that the team can win rather than sort of downplaying their chances but yeah as you say i think whatever happens it's going to be uh, a really fascinating contest tomorrow um so let's kind of turn to india's campaign in the World Cup so far as you were sort of saying there obviously there was that thrilling kind of last ball win against Pakistan in their first match um and then as expected you know they 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 beat the Netherlands although maybe not as convincingly as as um you, you might have yeah. thought um they what do they score 179 for 2 i think it was batting first um yeah. and yeah managed to to restrict the Netherlands and and won by about 50, I think it was about 56 runs in the end. Um, And then, obviously, the the last game was that loss to South Africa, which very much wasn't part of the plan. Um, So, yeah, yeah, how how would you kind of summarise India's campaign so far? I think with India, uh, there are certain things that seem to be very clear in uh in the departments where they're lacking like the problems are uh, pretty clear for them to see and i think rohit sharma also mentioned them uh after the the loss in the last game uh one was obviously uh the fielding that was something that's that's been a bit below par 
and that's something for india to improve uh, you know because we are reaching pretty serious territory in the world cup now uh so those are important chances for you to grab there were there was a missed uh catch there was you know there was a drop catch there were there were a couple of missed run outs there so these things can be for india at the top that you know kl rahul has become a bit of a problem uh he's not scoring runs you know there's the whole volume of runs that's one thing he's not getting enough runs and then he's also eating up balls at the start which has sort of an effect where rohit sharma is forced to play in a way that he doesn't naturally play rohit sharma likes to take his time assess the conditions and you know then once he's settled he likes to go for his strokes uh but in the power play there seems to be a lot more burden on uh rohit sharma now because kl rahul is not firing so that creates a problem at the start and you you can't can't always bank on uh, you know kohli or, or suresh kumar to help you out of a situation because uh, there needs to be more support from the other side so uh, fortunately for india that uh, kohli was able to do that in the pakistan game and uh, you know suresh kumar also to to a great extent did that against south africa uh, but that problem at the start is is really there so that's something that they need to work on now personally i don't really prefer having the team composition to be changed drastically during a tournament because you've got kl rahul and you want him to be your opener and you've backed that person so pretty much stick to that but uh, there's also the discussion that people are having about having rishabh pant in somewhere so that's also a very interesting call will that be made or uh, you know will they stick to kl rahul but yeah these are the two most important things right now that have been a cause of concern for india yeah i mean it's uh, it's an interesting point because you know you try and look at potential weak links uh certainly within the batting and as you say i think kl rahul is the obvious uh kind of uh batter there who has underperformed so far uh in the tournament but i guess you know from from a positive kind of point of view even if he kind of an underfiring kl rahul there's so much kind of talent uh to to come in after him that i guess it hasn't yeah. kind of impacted on on india as greatly as it might have yeah yeah i mean uh, if you think about it uh, hardik pandya was in great form leading up to the tournament and dinesh karthik obviously we we've we've heard so much about how good he is as a finisher and he's he has a very specific role to play uh in the death overs but uh, those two are also have been a little off color if you would say that um you know pandya also against uh, pakistan he was not he was there as a supporting hand for uh, for kohli but his strike rate sort of tailed off towards the end uh, dinesh karthik i know there's a lot of discussion about how he played the last innings um against south africa but uh, if you think about it he hasn't faced a lot of balls i mean it, it, it's a sort of role that you have to play it's a very difficult role where you don't get enough time you need to you know come in and start hitting from the get go uh it was a different role for him the last time he had to stay in settle himself and you know play that sort of a supporting hand with with sure kumar and uh, although he did not play a convincing role uh uh you know these are things that that sort of are can hurt india also going forward where you've got two very uh, powerful hitters at the end and uh they they you know they aren't really looking at their best so yeah those two are also uh, sort of a bit of a concern but i think it's just about coming good you know t20 is such a format where uh you you might not be in great form or you your track record might not be great in a particular condition against a particular opposition but you just you know you wake up one day and you play on a play a knock that changes the game so and these all of these players are capable of that absolutely and yeah like you say sometimes it is just a case of one or two players just coming off and 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 you know scoring quickly and and really kind of changing the game and i feel uh, one of those players and you've mentioned him already who's who's kind of had a brilliant 
kind of I'd say last 12 maybe even two years but maybe you can give us a bit more insight on him is is SKY I mean what a what a fantastic uh, kind of few months that he's had yeah he plays a brand of cricket that's just uh, you know it, it's completely different from the rest it it doesn't involve being worried about the opposition about what conditions he's playing in he just switches on his game and he goes into a different mode and you know those lap shots those scoops and all of them are all in place you know be it uh, a sort of a dreary pitch in india or like a pacey pitch in perth uh, he he all he has his shots and he plays them everywhere so suryo kumar has been you know great to see and he's fitted into the team so well it's just hard to uh, to imagine that he made his debut only last year because he seems to be probably the most important part of the team right now uh he is someone who uh sort of gets into his mode of hitting very very quickly he understands which bowlers to target and how and he rarely lets the run rate drop which is obviously very important because at the top india has a couple of players who like to take their time uh you know as we call them t20 anchors so surya kumar is someone who brings in that fluidity in the middle order he is sort of a bridge between uh, the top order and the middle order uh you know and he does that role really well he absolutely does and it will be fascinating to see uh how how he uh goes tomorrow against bangladesh so um moving on to kind of look at things a bit more from a bangladesh point of view um obviously like i say this is a it's a crunch game for both teams and yeah as we've already mentioned bangladesh are kind of going into the game sort of almost not expecting to win themselves but uh obviously from a bangladesh sort of fans point of view or perspective everyone still wants their team to win and to try to do their best i guess yeah the question is do you think well before i pose a question about you know do you think an upset might happen i mean we've already kind of identified maybe one or two weak areas uh in 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 the india uh makeup such as potentially at the very top of the order with kl rahul also potentially uh some of the uh, the batting in those def overs as well but over and above that i guess for me for for an upset to happen yeah bangladesh have got to obviously kind of play out of their skins um in all departments of the game and i guess india have to sort of underperform to to a great degree as well but in in terms of bangladesh's strengths it's certainly i think been their bowling particularly you know their their quick bowlers tuskin ahmed uh i think with eight wickets has has it might have changed today but he was certainly uh leading the wicket takers in the super 12 phase of the competition so he he's really led the attack and in the last game against uh zimbabwe mustafizor as well was kind of coming back into form which was uh very good to see from a bangladesh point of view so i think you know the bowling the fast bowling actually is 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 a strength for bangladesh which which is not an obvious thing to say by any means yeah. um and so i think for bangladesh to to do well i think they would probably want to bat first their their batting has looked pretty shaky i mean the two games that they've won they've kind of got to those sort of medium sized totals 140 150 and then managed to uh defend defend those totals principally on the back of their sort of fast bowlers picking up lots of wickets in the power plays they picked up four wickets in the power play against uh, the netherlands and the same against zimbabwe um in between obviously they came up against a red hot riley russo and quinton tokak who just you know were 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 on a different level in on that particular occasion so yeah for me i think if if bangladesh are to spring an upset they will look to their bowlers well they'll look to their batters to kind of put on some kind of defendable target and then try to try to bowl uh, as as best they can but you know from your point of view do you realistically see any any opportunity of a slip up for india uh i mean we've seen that happen in the past for india like a campaign you know going in a different direction when the team doesn't 
you know just stand up at the right time uh with bangladesh um obviously there's this whole history that's there and um as you rightly said they have to play out of their skins to win this one because uh their record in the last year or so in t20i's hasn't been great and uh, you mentioned the batting has been shaky and india's bowling attack all in all we didn't mention that right like so far but it's been pretty good it looks good even without just be bombra so uh, for them i think one opening that um, bangladesh could have is because taskin ahmed is in such such good form and they've generally done well with the ball in the power play that could be sort of a difference creating factor for for bangladesh this time where uh, they are if they can get a couple of wickets early and put on the pressure it could really test india's middle order and then it could go anyway from there on but it's obviously a lot of you know uh, hypotheticals there a lot of scenarios and different conditions and things in there but uh, i won't completely say that it's not possible but it's going to take a lot from bangladesh to pull that off yeah i mean i think you're right i think you know india certainly go into the match as as favorites and uh yeah for them to lose i mean I, it would be quite incredible if they did end up losing not only for the for the game but for the tournament itself i i mean i think the reverberations in india would be unthinkable if uh, if 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 india did end up losing tomorrow um one other factor to to kind of discuss i guess is that it's it's a day night game tomorrow it's in adelaide um and well all of bangladesh's games so far have been day games i'm just wondering as well um batting under lights potentially if you are batting second in that game you know maybe that would put you at a slight disadvantage um in terms of the ball kind of moving around a little bit more so yeah lots to lots to kind of uh consider there um just yeah quickly looking at india's bowling attack you were talking about the fact that jasprit bumrah is obviously missing through injury but yeah he he hasn't really been missed to a huge degree ashdeep singh bubaneshwar kumar um habib sami they've all kind of bowled well at, at, at times throughout the the tournament um but yeah interesting to to kind of maybe focus on ashwin's uh performance so far in the world cup hasn't well certainly against south africa had an off game uh i think it's fair to say um what how how do you see his his kind of form going into this game uh with ashwin obviously uh, you know we knew that he would not be having as much of a role to play as he generally does you know he's a match winner he takes wickets uh but given the conditions in australia it was always going to be the the pacers who have to do the bulk of the work uh but obviously in terms of matchups in terms of where the composition was it it seemed to be the right selection choice having ashwin there with so many left handers in the south african team uh but yeah it, it did not turn out to be a, a, a you know a great performance he ran into um, you know miller and markram who were playing so well um i think perth is a difficult track for the for the spinners in, in a sense and adelaide could be different so i would still be backing ashwin to sort of you know uh, create an impact there probably much more than he has uh, he did in south africa against south africa and um yeah i think it's very difficult to sort of uh, assess ashwin because he uh, he can really you know play a very important game at at any juncture it's it's just that he, we haven't seen the best of him so far but uh, it's good that the pacers have done well and they've sort of compensated for um, what we lack because obviously there's no jadeja this time we have uh, aksar patel and um, again south africa uh, obviously you, fielding aksar wouldn't have been probably the right choice so i think that's that's where the interesting bit is uh, ashwin is always going to be under scrutiny given the cricketer he is it's just always going to be the case but i think i think he'll have a bigger role to play against bangladesh yeah it it will certainly be interesting if he does play um because yeah interesting what you say spin 
Yes, spin, I would say, in, in Bangladesh, in the Bangladesh team and the India team hasn't kind of, um, in this tournament anyway, compared to how the spinners in some of the other teams have, have fared. I think the spinners in both teams haven't, haven't really uh, particularly shone brightly. Um, but, yeah, like you say, he's obviously a match winner. I mean, we've said it before. I think you look at that India team from 1 to 11, there's potentially you know, a match winner in, in every single one of those positions. Um, I guess that, yeah, it's interesting that the, the question of spin on, on the Bangladesh side, because they've basically gone with Shakib as, you know, their frontline spinner. Okay, they've got part-time spinning options, which we saw in the last game with uh, Mossadegh Hussein bowling that very memorable last over. Um, but, yeah, it's, for me... Um, the Bangladesh spin options haven't haven't particularly uh, had a huge influence on the World Cup so far. And indeed, Shakib himself is interesting to kind of, like you say, Ashwin is always under the spotlight. Shakib very much so from a Bangladesh point of view. Everything that he does is is constantly scrutinized. And it's interesting, obviously, he's, yeah. he's captain, captain of this team. And he's really held himself back in terms of his bowling. So against uh zimbabwe he only came on after the power of play i think it was in the seventh over also against uh south africa you know when de Kock and um uh and uh sorry who's the other player i've i've had a, a mental block there de Kock and rousseau the, the exactly player, so yeah yeah, when uh, De Kock and Rousseau were were kind of blazing the ball to all parts, he he actually held himself back completely. Okay, there's a, the 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 question of matchups, him being a a left armer bowling to uh, De Kock and Rousseau, but he he held him back himself back to the eleventh over. Um, when you know by that time, you know the damage had, had kind of already been done. So. Yeah, there's, there's. I feel there's a slight sort of question mark over over his bowling. Um, I think I haven't got the stats to hand, but I think if you look at his bowling, maybe over the last six months or so in in T20 specifically, hasn't been as as kind of uh, threatening as as you would expect. So yeah, from from a Bangladesh point of view, that's that's. Uh, a potential kind of uh, area that needs improvement. But like I say with Shaki, there's always something happening. <laughs> you could say that he turned the game in the last uh, game against uh, Zimbabwe with that fantastically athletic yeah. run out of, uh, yeah. of Williams in the penultimate over. So even when he's not obviously playing well, he's, he's always in the game. Yeah. Yeah, he is. And I mean, in that run out itself, these are things that can, you know, ch change a campaign where you are sort of floundering and then suddenly uh, sort of a, an act of magic can can sort of motivate the whole team to do well. Uh, but yeah, that was a brilliant run out from, from Shakib at that point, given the context and, you know, where they stood. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it really was a, a game changer in the end. I guess just, just one last point on this in terms of, uh, yeah, potentially Bangladesh kind of sneaking a win against um, India. Like you say, I think it is quite interesting, the momentum of both teams. So Bangladesh are on the back of, of this last gasp win, which, as you rightly say, should kind of fill them with confidence in terms of uh, being able to to kind of get, get a victory um, in, in such a close situation and, and India on the other hand on the back of a loss. So again, if we're if we're thinking of potential a potential uh plus for Bangladesh, that would certainly be one of them as well, I would say. Um but just before we finish off, I wanted to you did allude to it earlier in terms of the history uh of of games between the two teams. They have played in in lots of World Cups actually. Um in, in sort of the recent past. And there's always been quite eventful games between the two. But I want to talk specifically a game that you were at uh, back in 2016, <laughs> where it looked for all the world that Bangladesh were going to win. I think, what did they need off the last three balls? Was it one run? Yeah, I think they needed two or one of the last three balls and then not 
Yeah, I think yeah, that was the case. They needed two, I think. Two of three is what they needed. And as and, we all know, uh, yeah. Well, tell us a story. <laughs> I mean, if if you're at the stadium, it's all a blur now. If you think about it, because um, you know you you see that it's almost over. You've got someone like a Hardik Pandya bowling the last over, who at that point uh, wasn't obviously as big a name as he is now. It was probably his second or third tournament um, for India, and um, you know. You've got Dhoni at the back who's who's marshalling his troops, you know, just telling what to do where. Uh, you have a feeling that, you know, you've seen that happen so many times for India and in the IPL that that thing could change. But, um, uh, you know, there was... Mushfikar was there. You knew that he was a very dependable figure there to, to sort of steer them because it, it seemed like a very simple equation. And then that catch in the deep where Dhawan took off of Pandya and suddenly, uh, you know, you've got your number eight, number nine and all. You've got Mustafa batting out of nowhere. I mean, uh, he was at the, at the other end. But uh, yeah, that was a that was a pretty crazy experience to be around because you've got, first of all, you've got like a good support from both sides at the stadium. You've got a good number of India and Bangladesh fans. And then, you know, the last ball, the whole miss and Dhoni just, for a, for a very long time, no one at the stadium knew what had happened because they were not showing the replays. And we were just waiting for the <laughs> for the result to come for us to see what had happened because for the naked eye, it was not possible to understand if he had actually managed to, to run out uh, Mustafa Fizur. But yeah, it, it was a crazy game. And we, we focused so much on the last over and the last, uh, you know, last ball that it was a pretty topsy-turvy game all in all. Like there's so many so yeah. many things that happened throughout the game so many things that happened yeah well if if we get a, a a game that's half as exciting as that tomorrow i think uh we'll all be in for a big treat but um yeah it's been fascinating talk to you talking to you adia and um yeah i mean i'm i'm certainly looking forward to this game tomorrow i think whatever happens it's going to be interesting as we were saying i think off air it's it's actually been a really interesting world cup so far there's been so many close finishes and uh who's to say that there won't be one tomorrow um but for the time being adia thank you so much for for coming on uh, thanks for having me Thank you so much. It's been brilliant having you on out here. And thank you, everyone, for watching the latest edition of the Sight Screen Cricket Journal podcast. Do check out the website, sightscreencj.com. I'll be posting a, a review of the match after it takes place tomorrow. And do also check out the Twitter feed for all the latest news and views concerning Bangladesh cricket and a lot more. That's at Sightscreen CJ. But for the time being, goodbye for now.